uh, legislation that gave it more control within the colonies, especially when it came to taxing the colonists, right? And so they were in debt after the French and Indian War. So it started taxing the American colonies to increase their revenues. And the passage of legislation, you, you, you'll read about, I'm not going to go through it, the Stamp Act, right? Uh, in, uh, in March 1765, you have the Townshend um, Act and, and you have the Tea Act. And it forced the colonists to pay more money to Great Britain. And even though the colonies didn't have a say in the Crown's policies, this became known as taxation without representation. And that became a heated pillar in the foundation of the American Revolution that landed us to where we are um, today. So is this not a reminder of where we are today, though? Legislation being passed without true representation, right? Making decisions for us without us being truly representing, drawing lines in red to keep us in a contained environment, with little to no resources, don't want us in certain neighborhoods and control resources inside the line, how much we can get and, and, and who gets what, what part of the American pie, the American dream is complicated. Then on June 19, you know, we now celebrate a holiday to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the U.S. The holiday was first celebrated in Texas, where on that day in 1865, in the aftermath of the Civil War, slaves were declared free under the terms of the 1862 Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth honors the end of slavery in the United States and is considered the longest running African-American holiday. And we all know that on June 17, 2021, it officially became a federal holiday. What is emancipation? Emancipation is any effort to procure economic and social rights, political rights, or equality, often for a specifically disenfranchised group, etc. So it's an act by which a person, generally a slave, who was once under the authority of another is set free. So we were that disenfranchised group. Uh, but our question is, you know, are we no longer <laughs> that disenfranchised group? Do we feel we have equal economic and social and political rights? It's complicated. But Juneteenth commemorates, commemorates the effective end of slavery in the United States. Oh, but today we're dealing with a different kind of slavery. It's the slavery that works to control outcomes, control our outcomes through legislation and hiring practices and hiring limitations and who gets to be the face of the corporation in the executive line and oh don't be a black woman because that's another ladder and then there are lines that are drawn in red that keeps us in certain neighborhoods and now tampering with our voting rights controlling outcomes it's a different kind of slavery that assaults and whips with words and pins and nooses and isms around our psyche, our minds, creating limitations and barriers. It's a different kind of slavery. We don't just need a holiday. We need equality. We need restorations of what rightfully belongs. For us, because we can't forget over the years what we've been facing in the brutality. We can't forget those that have died from senseless hatred and judgment and biases, and those that have died under under law enforcement who 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 judged us by the color of our skin. Dante Wright, 20 years old, Ray, Rashad Brooke, 27 years old, and it was Daniel Prude, who was 41 years old, had a mental health episode and was killed. You have George Floyd, 46 years old, and Breonna Taylor. So you have Stefan Clark, Austin Sterling, uh, Freddie Gray, uh, uh, Janisha Fawnfield, uh, Tamara Rise, the 12 year old, toy gun in the park, no charges even brought to the police officers that killed him, Michael Brown, no charges. It's a different kind of slavery. If we just take a picture of even how we even arrived to have our voting rights, the murder of voting rights activists in Mississippi, and then the attack by state troopers on peace 
peaceful marchers in Selma, um, Alabama, gained national attention. And that's what created the persuasion for President Johnson and Congress to initiate meaningful and effective national voting rights legislation. So Congress passed the 15th Amendment in 1870. It said, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States by any state on account of race or color or previous condition of servitude. The right of citizens of the U.S. to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Yet states still found ways to circumvent the Constitution and prevent Blacks from voting, poll taxes and literacy tests and fraud and intimidation all turn African Americans away from the polls until the Supreme Court struck it down in 1915. Many states used this grandfather clause in the past to, to keep descendants of slaves out of the election. The clause said, you could not vote unless your grandfather had voted. <laughs> An impossibility for most people whose ancestors were slaves. And so this unfair treatment was debated, you know, on the street, in the Congress, and in the press, and the full 50 years after the 15th Amendment passed, Black Americans still found it difficult to vote, especially in the South. The fight for African American suffrage raged on for decades, and then in the 1930s, we've got one Georgia man described the situation this way. He said, do you know I've never voted in my life because I've never been able to exercise my right as a citizen because of the poll tax? I can't pay a poll tax, can't have a voice in my own government. But that's why we found that the, we found many people just protested and marched and were arrested and even died working toward voting equality. That's why we say you better vote. In 1963, we already know the story, 1964 MLK brought hundreds of black people to the courthouse of Selma to register. And when they were turned away, he organized a led protest that finally turned the tide of American political opinion. And in 1964, the 24th Amendment prohibited the use of politics. You see how long we've been fighting. And the fighting isn't over. But in 1965, the Voting Rights Act directed the Attorney General to enforce the right to vote for African Americans. And it created a significant change in the status of African Americans throughout the, the South. It prohibited the states from using literacy tests and other methods of excluding African Americans from voting. It's a different kind of slavery. Prior to this, only, only an estimated 23% of voting aged Blacks were registered nationally, but by 1969, the number had jumped to 61%. It was a different kind of slavery. New Jersey, here's a, here's a trivia question. You know who was the first African-American to vote in an election? Under the, 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 let me go all the way back to the just enacted provision of the 15th Amendment uh, to the um, United States Constitution. His name was, and you should remember this, tell your kids, Thomas Mundy Peterson from Perth Amboy. His vote was cast on March 31st, 1870. And today, they're trying to control the outcome once again. That's, that's the slavery, trying to keep us in bondage by controlling outcomes. And they're trying to control the outcomes once again. They're still working to put up barriers. So who says we're free under this United States of America? We are the disunited States of America where hurdles for tens of millions of voters are in place to derail our free voice. Law proposed to limit mail-in, early in person and election day voting backed by the GOP, potentially amounting to the most sweeping contraction of ballot access in the United States since the end of reconstruction when Southern states curtailed the voting rights to formerly enslaved black men. This was reported by a Washington Post analyst. Analysis that they had done. It's a different kind of slavery that want to prohibit our freedom our freedoms under the Constitution. But we're not foreign to that noose. We're not foreign to the constraints and all forms of isms from racism to classism. We're not foreign to them. We're not foreign to those that don't understand nor want to understand us. Yet there is one story in the Bible that speaks and shows the world what true freedom looks like. Something that was drafted as our 
Declaration of Independence. It was a story of God sending his son Jesus to die for us. He took the sins of the world upon himself. He was crucified, buried, rose again, and forever, say forever, lives today. That's the one story that can't be undone that no law or political power can undo. You can't vote on this one, baby. It has been done and cannot be undone. The victory has been won once and for all, and there is no undoing of this victory. It is the victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross. I know we have experienced backward motion, but there is nothing that can stop the blood of Jesus from reaching the soul of men to sing and to set captives free. Say hallelujah, someone, because I, Q English, was one that was lost and now I'm found because of the blood of Jesus. His law that was drafted by him, endorsed by him, signed off and permanently sealed the deal. His blood that was shed for me. I am free because of Calvary. My independence is irrevocable. No racism or hatred or the laws and constraints that men can bring me back into captivity. Because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He brought my freedom with his death. And because of that, I can declare that I am free indeed. Hallelujah. A law didn't set me free. Man didn't set me free. And because man didn't set me free, man can't enslave me. He can't put me into bondage for whom God has set free is free indeed. I am free. Let me hear the blood washed saints declare today I am free. No more chains holding me. My freedom was bought with a price by, by someone who is invincible, undefeatable. He is the lawyer and the judge and the jury in the courtroom. The U.S. Supreme Court has nothing on him, for he is our supreme being. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God almighty. Hallelujah. That is the true independence. The day when Jesus Christ came into your life and set you free from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. I no longer have to cry for my freedom. He granted me freedom. And that's the freedom that can't be taken away from us. Our independence isn't tied to a date. It isn't tied to Juneteenth or, or the 4th of July. Our independence is tied to the blood of Jesus Christ. My mind is free because of the blood. I can do all things because of the blood. I can overcome temptations because of the blood. I can walk through doors that man shut because of the blood. I can have that job because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I can have that house stepping outside of the red colored line because of the blood. I am more than a conqueror because of the blood. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I am free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I am free at last. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. I'm here to tell you that this blood, that his blood still saves today. That if you are in need of a savior, I'd like to introduce you to my savior, Jesus Christ, who came into my heart and cleaned me up from the inside out. God's word says it in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I invite you to come be a part and make this your independence day in the kingdom of God. 
If that's you today, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, forgive me for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I acknowledge that your son, Jesus Christ, died for me. I want to become your child today. So I confess my sins before you. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus Christ, your son, from the dead. Therefore, I receive your salvation. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. <laughs> Thank you. I am committed this day, just make that commitment to walk alongside God in this new kingdom of yours. You don't switch kingdoms. You went from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So commit this day that you're going to allow him to walk with you and teach you what it means to be a son and what it means to be a daughter and what it means for him to be your father. We want to send resources to you. I want you to type that word believe to that number so we can begin to get resources into your hands. So as you begin your new journey on this year Independence Day, hallelujah. Well, it's offering time in the sanctuary. It's a time where we give and we love to give. We love to give because God teaches us that he's the first. We can't out give God. Let's just let that be known. But he said, give. And it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your unto your bis, into your unto your bosom. And so we love giving. It's a joy to give, knowing that that 10%, that tithe belongs to God. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna put that aside first and foremost. We're not gonna even touch that. We're not gonna play with that 10%, because we'd rather have a blessed 90 than a cursed 100. We're gonna give God what rightfully belongs to Him. We're gonna bring that tithe into His storehouse. And then we're going to give over and above what we could call the offering. And that is our sacrifice to God. And we know that we cannot, and no matter what it is we do, outgive God. So, so be obedient today. You know how to give. You can give online. You can meet us on 1015 East Gun Hill Road on, um, on Tuesday mornings, or you can even mail it in. We're still doing mailings and you have still been faithful in mailing in. And many of you are faithful that, that have been given online. So I encourage you to remain faithful in your giving. And those that have not been, it's not too late to start. Start today. Start your road to obedience today. Ask God to forgive you and begin your journey in being obedient to his commandment to give of the tithes and our sacrifice in the offerings. Amen. Don't forget, BCF, we're coming together. August 8th, Family and Friends Day. Invite everyone. We're at the theater, AMC Bay, Bay, uh, Bay Plaza Theater, right there next to Co-op City, 930 in the morning. Invite everyone. Um, and then we have a special August 1st service just for our BCF family. I want you to come out and, and join us then. But August 8th, that's when everybody, everyone, everyone's invited. Family and friends, we're getting the word out so that we can uh, create this new journey that we're on, particularly coming out of COVID. And we're tr trusting God that we're going to have a permanent exit from COVID-19 as we take responsibility to make sure that we're vaccinated. Love you guys. Have an amazing week. Until next week, enjoy your Independence Day. God bless.